And unpause. All right, first things first, let's get our mech factory down. G'day, ladies and gents, and welcome to Iron Harvest 1920 Alpha 1. This is the closed alpha for Iron Harvest, only available for those who have supported the game on Kickstarter. And it is Alpha 1, so it is the first release, and it's looking absolutely fantastic. But I suppose the first thing I really need to cover is, <laughs> what is Iron Harvest? Well, Iron Harvest is an RTS game. Uh, it's in the same vein as the Company of Hero Heroes series, which I'm sure many of you, well, I want to get that grenade, um, I'm sure many of you are already noticing the look already. The basic storyline, well, the campaign details haven't been released as of yet, but uh, the basic storyline is the Great War happened, as it was, and on top of developing uh, you know, tank combat and air combat and all the other things that the Great War gave us, we also developed, uh, I was going to say steampunk, but I suppose these are sort of a cross between steampunk and diesel punk, uh, battle mechs. Yes, mech combat in a Company of Heroes style game. You can see why I was attracted to this, great from the word go. Now, the Great War played out and completed as it was, and sometime after, in the 1920s, three factions started vying for power in the, the areas of Europe. One is based on Poland, one is based on Russia, and one is based on Germany. And you can play as one of these three factions in the campaign. We're playing as the Polish faction at the moment. I believe we're fighting the Russian faction. And, well, for the moment in Alpha 1, there's no real difference. We have access to exactly the same units, and everything operates exactly the same way. Now, the... Get these guys back before they get grenaded here. Um, the Alpha itself is currently limited to only this one map and only access to the, the the units you will see in this battle. I will try and get them all out and cover what they all are. With the engineers there, we have that point under control. Push some troops up to the back of this building, see if we can ambush the guys before they can push down. Um, capture that point, and let's get our Gatling mech up. Uh, the Gatling mech, I actually don't know the names of all the mechs at this point, I haven't memorized them all, but the Gatling mechs are uh, anti-infantry. Um, big Gatling gun in a big box, essentially a walking pillbox, pretty slow, uh, nearly immune to light arms fire, extremely vulnerable to the other mechs. Put that under control. If we bring them around here, see if we can ninja that, uh, that resource point. Now, the, uh, the basic skirmish map here is... Oh, that was a grenade. Back off, back off, back off. Gatling mech up. Uh, the basic uh, skirmish map here is a pretty straightforward symmetrical map. Um, it is... Uh, just capture the points. Whoever gets the highest number of resource points within the map time frame uh, is the winner. Uh, maps, uh, matches usually last for about 10 minutes, give or take. Point. And this is all that is in the first alpha, but it is extremely playable, and that is that infantry group gone, but I took out there, so that is fair. So we might have to get a few more under production here. And we'll get our rifleman mech up. This is a anti-mech mech with a big-ass cannon. Uh, we don't have any mechs to deal with yet, but I'm sure we will soon enough. Get off that capture point. I do not want you having that capture point. Close in and strafe them out. Yes, that's what I wanted. Get rid of that last engineer too. Alright, two squads of troops. Where are we going to put them? We have troops pushing down towards that resource point, so we'll send our troops that way for the moment. They can take out the guys trying to take that resource point, and then we will capture it for ourselves. Oh, those are carrying bazookas. Um, okay, so I should probably talk about the special units themselves as I pick up this grenade here as a great demonstration of what I'm about to talk about. The In most RTS games, when you build a unit type, that unit type is dedicated to a job. So if you build rifleman units, they are just rifleman units. If you build anti-tank units, they have anti-tank weaponry and they're specialised in that. 
In Iron Harvest, all of the unit types that you can build are actually rifleman units, but you can build them with upgrades. However, if those units are killed, they will drop those upgrades on the battlefield, which are these small white rotating objects here. I'm just about to drop my grenades and pick up the bazooka upgrade, or the rocket launcher upgrade, which will turn my groups, or turn that group of riflemen into anti-tank units. Beforehand, they picked up the grenades, uh, the grenade upgrade, which turned them into grenadiers. This means it is possible if your enemy is playing a lot of specialized units, tank mech here, so we simply deal with it. We've got the cannon up, we've got the rifleman mech up, and Lucas from the left. Now we're going to take out their rifleman mech. Um, this means that if your enemy is fielding a lot of specialized upgrades, you can get away with just building standard riflemen, using them to clean out the infantry groups, and then pick up the upgrades for whatever you need as they're sitting around on the battlefield. It also means that you can take a specialized unit that you already have. They are bringing up a cannon of their own. I do not want that, so we are going to get our bazooka units in there and turn our cannon onto their cannon. And where is it? There is our rifle in the mech. Better yet to get them. We'll bring that around and attack them behind. No troops coming down that side, it's all pretty clear for the moment, and this point is secure, so we have taken it. Let's go take that one. So yeah, all your troops can be very flexible and can change roles on the battlefield if the upgrades are available. Likewise, you can find some upgrades in some of the resource crates you'll find around the skirmish matches or the skirmish map, which is nice as well. These seem to be relatively random on what you'll find. There is a base building component, however it's pretty light on at this point in time. I'm not entirely sure whether or not that's just because the base building is going to be relatively simplistic in the end game, or whether or not it is just because it is the alpha. I would tend to lead with how well the, uh, the mechanics are in this game, that it is yeah, it's at 50%, that's not good. Um, I would tend to believe that... Get our medical base up. Um, it is likely just because it is alpha. And they, you sneaky bastards, are trying to take our resource point. Let's bring our guys back. They are grenadiers. Um, let's get our Gatling mech over there as well. Help clean them out. Um, they're pushing the cannon away. We'll take that bazooka upgrade. Now, Gatling Mech to engage the cannon at close range, although he's sort of engaging two groups here at the moment, so... Bazookas from behind into the back of the cannon. We should be able to disable the cannon. That cannon seems to take a lot more hits than mine did, and we just lost our Gatling Mech. Replenish. Now we've built the medical base, we can replenish units if we bring them back to base. We can take that control point. And the cannon is neutralized, we just have to deal with that last uh, engineer that's over the back. Clean him up. Let's bring our squadron of, our squad of mechs up. So yeah, very company of heroes influence. Now the developer is King Art Games. Uh, I wasn't overly familiar with their work before I backed them on Kickstarter, however I did a bit of research on them and it seems their biggest titles have mainly been point click adventure games, for the most part. However, they wanted to build a strategy, they wanted to build something like Company of Heroes, and they wanted it to be a game that was less about clicks and more about strategy. So, a thinking man strategy game, one where you... You spend the time to put your troops in the right place and you will be rewarded for it rather than just having the person who can spam the mouse button the fastest be the person who is going to win. Which is nice. There haven't been enough RTSs like that. There haven't been enough RTSs in general recently, but um, especially nothing focusing towards the, um, well, the, the strategy in real-time strategy. Now, as I said, the uh, the game will come with campaign. There will be a campaign for each of the three factions, and the three factions on release will have access to unique units and unique uh, special commanders as well. 
I think, uh, from what I've been able to read on it, think uh, Red Alert and Command and & Conquer, back in the days when you had access to, you know, like Tanya and the other special commando units you'll get access to, each faction will have their own version of those, which won't be technically a super unit, but they will be a unit that does have access to very particular, and they've got another tank up there at the moment, uh, will have access to very particular special abilities, and you'll be able to use those abilities to open up new strategic options. Um, get a replenish on these guys, and let's get them up here to support the Gatling mech. We're at 50%, excellent. I'm ticking along nicely with steel and oil, I've got no resource problems at this point in time, I'm manpower. 114 to 150. I still could build more units, but I'm trying not to. Mainly because I want those points available if I need to start rapidly spamming more units. Our tank mech is down, and that infantry squad is down as well. Alright, and they've got another tank produced in their base, so we will take them from behind. These guys, there are two squads over here, although one's pretty knackered, but we should be able to take those guys down and take that point. I will bring the... Bring the engineers up. Just lost one of our rifle mechs, or our uh, anti-armor mechs. But they just lost the tank. Uh, the second tank seems to be focusing on our Gatling mech, so we're not going to worry about it too much at this point. If we lose it, it's annoying, but it's not devastating. And so long as it's getting shot, our actual uh, anti-armor mech is actually not going to be taking hits. Take that research point, or uh, research point. We're about to lose the Gatling mech. Uh, bring the infantry up here. Finally, we've got two squads of infantry coming in to support the mechs. And I think this is just about all she wrote. So yeah, for the moment, this is pretty much all that is in the game at this moment. There is uh, the standard skirmish mode, and there is a couple of challenge modes that uh, you can activate if you want to increase the difficulty, asking you to complete the match within a certain time frame, or to complete it with a certain amount of resources, or to compete it, uh, complete it without actually using any mechs to increase the challenge. But that's all that's really in Alpha 1. That said, what is here is completely playable, and it's good. Damn it. God, those makes look great. Um, I'm going to need more units up here. I'll get our Gatling mech engaged, but that is... Actually, probably pull him back. Well, I don't think it's going to matter. I think we're about to win on resources here. Um, yeah, what is here is completely playable and functional. It works perfectly mechanically. And feels quite balanced. Like, it feels like a complete game that just hasn't had all of the content installed into it yet, which is great. Extremely stable, looks great, runs great. Let's get a couple more. Yeah, that'll be about all we need, I think, at this point. And we'll replenish our bazooka troops and we'll get them heading back up here to assist. I think that cannon's still alive in there. 90% victory points. And start attacking. Oh, sneaky bastards are trying to take the point. Get these guys back over here to defend our point, and we should have it done. At a thousand points, we win. So yeah, everything looks quite playable. I've been following this one for quite some time, because obviously, you know, steampunk, diesel punk battle mechs, that's always going to get my attention. And... Well, it's as good so far as I hoped it would be, and it's only going to get better as more content is added in. Now, I'm not entirely sure on what the release schedule for the Alphas will be, but this is a game that I'm probably not going to be popping up on the channel all the time, but I will be popping up each time a new version of the Alpha is released, and eventually when the beta itself is released, and there we go, there's victory. So, yeah, expect to see more of this on the channel very soon. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. As always, remember to click that like button, share, and subscribe if you would like to see more, and as always, 
Take care.